Okay. Welcome to the final lecture of the course. We will continue our discussion on multiple C codes. This is the fourth lecture on multiple C codes. And today we will see more an application of the multivariate setting of the multiple C codes. Hmm? Particularly, we will see how it answers the question that we had asked a while ago, two lectures ago. So, recall main goal. We recall a question from this one. Do there exist locally decodable codes which you can recover from some constant fraction of errors? So, errors like something like one, one over thousand. Fraction of the things are uh, sort of corrupted, and you're still able to recover. You want to be able to recover from. Want to do this? You want to recover from some constant fraction of errors. In particular, that means the distance should be constant. Errors. You want to do this with query complexity, which is sublinear. Sublinear and rate. And the thing is, we, we already saw how to answer the first few questions. Ray Muller codes. We have told you how to recover some constant fraction of errors. The Ray Muller decoding, we saw the three types of decoding here. One was the Local correction algorithm. Just pick a random affine subspace that contains the point which you care for query that will recover from constant fraction of errors. And it's also very complexity is mm -hmm. But the thing that it fails to have is you want rate approaching one. Do they does the question is do they exist such tricks? And we did not know how to do what we will show is. Today, by the end of today's lecture, is the multi the multivariate version of multiplicity codes will actually give you will answer this question. Okay. So we will get codes which rates arbitrarily close to one. If you tell me one minus delta, I can get you one minus epsilon, I can give you rates which are as close to one as possible. Very complex will be some linear like the other codes. And you also recover from a constant fraction of error. This particular means that this kind of the code is also constant. <laughs> okay. And so let's recap. So, what do Reed Muller codes achieve? Let's and see where do Reed Muller codes and what is their shortcoming? Why do they fail to be to raise close to one? Let's see that. What was Reed Muller code? Reed Muller codes was this. Okay. What is read model code? Read model codes, RM codes are they take a degree less than or equal to T polynomial over say M variables. They view the message as a polynomial like this and they encode it. Let's do it over the entire field over F to the M. So they give basically. Yeah, I give you a polynomial, and that's what they encode. So this is read Muller over some Q, M and R, M and D. That's the equation map. And in particular, it takes a polynomial P, maps it to P of A over all A in F to B. Hmm. What was the Let's recap. So that's the that was the definition of the code. Hmm. 
what's its the two main things that we want to understand about the code. Let's look at distance. Distance was given by Schwarzschild lemma. We didn't actually prove the Schwarzschild lemma in class, but the distance is basically one minus d by q was the distance. The probability that a non-zero polynomial is zero at a random point was d by q, therefore the distance is one minus it is at most d by q, therefore the distance is at least one minus d by q. This is I'm, I'm, we are going to be working with the setting when q is much larger than this. So this will be the setting. So those are for yeah, so yeah. So this is we, we had a strong version of positive which will exactly give you the distance for all settings of q. But in both today's lecture, all of today's lectures, we're going to be working in q, which is much, much larger than the D. So this is what the stronger version of the D. Even the multigrade counterpart will be doing that actually. Actually, it's very interesting. So, what we what we what I will be doing in the lecture will they ask this question again? We will actually be proving the distance for multigrade multiple. So we'll be extending one of the main parts of today's lecture will be extending the quadruple lemma to the multigrade multiple board. And we can ask the question if you're asking now, do ask it at that point of time. So suppose we set this to be delta. I define this to be delta. That is Delta is one minus rather. Mm -hmm. Let me write it this way. That is D is equal to one minus delta into Q. Yes. Okay. And what's the rate of this code? Mm -hmm. So the rate of this code, so usual, so rate is uh, K by N, K by N, if the, both the input and the output are working on the same alphabet. Here they are working with the same alphabet. Else, otherwise, you have to be a little careful. You have to write rate as by n will be outside, but the we have to write as log of size of c times the output alphabet. This is how rate will be. That is, you are writing how many bits of information are there per output alphabet. This is exactly what we are writing. This is the case of when the input output alphabet are the same, this will be k by n. Which is exactly what is it in this case is d plus m choose m by q power m. Hmm. Let's write this a little more. I'm going to think of m as just think of m as like just a constant, a large constant, but a constant. The d is the growing number, q, d and q are growing, m is a constant, m is like 100 or two, something. Hmm. One, so then in that case, this is approximately d power m by m factorial 1 plus the low 1 by q power m. Okay. In which case, and now let's go, let's use the substitution d by q is 1 minus delta. This is roughly delta. This is roughly 1 minus delta to the power m by m factorial into 1 plus the low 1. Okay, this is I'm saying for a constant. For a constant. Hmm? This is the distance of the rate. And you also saw that this was locally decodable. There was an algorithm that just if you want to write, in fact, it's not just locally decodable, it's locally factored. It is at any point if you want to recover, you just pass a random affine subscript. And for this range of parameters, the affine subscript can be as small as a line. Pass an R random affine line to that point, query it and do the insolvent decoding along that line. That was algorithm. So that does, and so notice that the query complexity for this is n to the power 1 over m. You are querying only 1 over m. Uh, the, the actual block length is n, which is q power m, but you are querying only q location. Therefore, that's like n to the 1 over m. Interpolation. The final, because in the simple algorithm, we said that in subspace will not count in any of us at all. Depends, uh, depends. So that's how I created it in black, but you can also go a little more. That is, you can say that if there are high, so suppose there are data by 10 errors, then you can show that the random line will, with, with high probability, you see at most data by five errors with high probability. And even now you, you can do recording and decoding. Yeah. 
The way we said it this way, but you can this will allow you to have even more uh, smaller errors that can even more errors that can happen. Even more errors that can happen, but you can do so that's basically what we're going to put off this random affine line through uh, this point which you want to this one. You expect to see much fewer, even the probability that you'll see more than double the fraction of global fraction of errors on this line is small just by Marco. You can also do a pairwise independence. This one and bound that. Once you have that, then regular read column and will sort of occur. Okay, so it's going to lovely deeper, but let's see the rate of this code. Notice this n factor means a twice code over here. That is, you are, we are going to have n to the at least two, which will mean that this number is always a number less than half. So this is always less than half since. M is greater than or equal to. Hmm? Therefore, read model codes, no matter what you do, and you want to make it more and more uh, locally deeper with the subbing here to make it even as small as possible, you have to make M larger and larger. That means the rate is going to take such a huge rate. So the question is so read model codes, so the main conclusion is the following RM codes. Even though locally decodable, in fact, even correctable, so the correctable is a TI really or TA really? What would the A? A correctable. And who decides that? Hmm? Uh, is that even correctable? Hmm. You're using Q equals order n to the 1 over m queries. However, rate is always less than half and goes to Zero as m goes to infinity. So the rate is actually shown. So what we want is actually we want codes with rates. So if you actually want to practically implement the the m will be constant. So q and d are going to be numbers larger than m. M will be a large constant. So the question of which are the ones which are going at different rate. So m will will choose it to be a if I want rate to, uh, the way we actually do this in the final thing, I want rate to be like one minus epsilon. Based on that epsilon, you'll choose m to be large enough, but it's a fixed constant, and then d and q will be shooting off to infinity. d and q will be parameterized by m. They will be going to, that's how it will be. So as become m becomes larger, this is going to be very, very small. So that's it, you let, but no matter what, any, every setting of it is rate is at most half. So you never get rate. Better than half. The question will be for us is so even the foods go great in this aspect, they don't get rate greater than half. The question is can we get rate better than half? Great go closer to one. And that's what we we'll see that the multiplicity quadruple love. The multivariate multiplicity code will achieve. So and we do it today. See how. Multivariate multiplicity codes get around this rate that this rate half value. So multivariate multiplicity codes so, and mult 
M with the underlying Q, there's a S parameter and then there's a degree parameter. As always, this maps the M variate polynomial that's going to be equal to T to something for every field element where sigma is what is sigma? Sigma is going to give you it's an alphabet which gives you the evaluation in all the derivatives up to parameter up to order s at the point p. Therefore, that is that itself is f to the power. What was it? S plus m minus one. Choose m. In particular, if you set yes to be equal to one, you will just get f to the power one. We have and what is the Thing, it is basically you take a polynomial p and you map it to the entire derivatives that is the encoding. <coughs> so once again, I would like to if we, we need to understand both the rate and distance of this code, how it so what we will show, so we need to understand, so we like to understand the rate, distance of the code, and also come up with a locally decodable, locally decodable, local decoder for this underlying code. So first, the rate is something which we do know how to write down. What is the rate? Rate is just, rate is now, here I will actually use this, so it's log. So let's actually, let's, not work with very this one. Let's work with a very let's work with just a simple case with men which m is two. You're just working with a bivariate setting and yes is two. Let's show even in this case you can do something better than rate one of four. But if I can get rate better than half and I can get something new. eventually to get rate very close to one, we might need to go. We might eventually to get rate very close to one, you will have to take larger and larger s. Yes. To make the very complex. Notice that in m equal to in these one of four, what the very complexity? Square root log length. So here also it is the same thing. Okay, square root log length. And to make that square root log length to be much, much smaller than square root, we will take m to be large. So m and s play will take two different roles. M will have the mean one of four, the larger and larger m you go, you will make the sublinear thing smaller and smaller. But even at m equals two, you already get something. And Factor is what is going to be let the rate go beyond half. And you'll see that already s equals two will give us rates close to two thirds. And as we make s larger and larger, it will be a number that goes closer and closer. Well, isn't the rate simply one by a plus a minus one to scale into the rate of the Huh? We'll see one second. So let's let's just see. Let's let's move in the next 10 minutes. We're gonna end on the rate. Rate is what? Rate is d plus m choose let's just write rate of the thing so so I, I, let's just do it for the m equals two case as equal to two. so once again so here i'll have to use this formula log the number of code words sigma by the block length the block length n so let's write each of these what is mod c mod c is exactly q to the power uh, d plus two, choose two. Hmm. What is sigma? A plus a minus one to same times So s plus yes, yes, s plus a two, two plus. Uh, it's basically uh, s plus m minus one to again is three in this case because you have to give me the evaluation and the first order derivatives in two directions. So this is q. This is what is this? this is what did I, what did I say? It's q q. Hmm. That's the base of the exponent. And what is the n here? Q then q square. Q square. Q square. That's the block one. Hmm. So that let's let's make it log to the base q. That would bring a one third outside. Hmm. That's one third. Hmm. Then you have uh, then you have log q to the d plus two choose two. That's roughly just d plus 2 choose 2. That's exactly d plus 2 choose 2. By what do we have? 
by Q squared. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm going to think of D and D and Q as large numbers. Therefore, this is approximately just D square over two. Mm -hmm. So this is roughly one by six D square by Q square. Huh? If you look at it, it seems as if you have one worse than lead mother. Lead mother was one. If you read mother over here, you didn't have the only difference between lead mother and this is you didn't have a one by three. Huh? So this would have been d squared by two, one by two, d squared by two square. Then it is one by six, d squared by two square. It seems as if they one worse. So the point we'll see shortly is what was d in what was d for read mother? D was one minus delta times two. We notice that D can here can be made larger than one minus the other thing. That is, we can actually make D to be larger than Q itself. That's the first step. We'll see that starting. So let's keep this at this. Now let's go into distance. Let's now try to understand distance of. So is this calculation okay? Now let's look at distance of the pole. Okay. So we need the corresponding Schwarzschild lemma over here. So what's the Schwarzschild lemma? So I'll first state it. We will see the kind of what what the conclusion of it, and then we'll go ahead and go and prove the Schwarzschild lemma. So so let's recall the standard Schwarzschild lemma. Standard Schwarzschild lemma. States that if p belongs to f less than or equal to t, x1 to xm, and p is not identically zero, then for any s subset of f, if you look at the probability and you pick a random vector in the product grid, take s far n, take a random point in the product grid, and ask what is the probability P A is zero. This is at most D over size of this. This is the standard. Short super one. Yeah, we, this is easy to prove by induction. We didn't prove this in class. Hmm? But this is what gave the distance of the real model. I need the corresponding multiplicity version of this to get the distance for the multivariate good. So let me rewrite this slide in this question over here. So that I'm going to generalize this for the multiplicity case. So an equivalent way of writing this object is this is the same as writing expected value over A, S power M, of the indicator that P A is. It's the same thing, it's exactly the same. The probability is the same as the indicator, the expectation of the indicator random variables are the event factors. Now, extension to multiplicities. What was, let's, let's first see the, what's the univariate extension. In the univariate world, what was this? This is just taking that here. This the univariate world, we have exactly the same. So if you have a set of signs, yes, and you have degree D polynomial. What's the probability that a random point is the zero of the point? You get that it is zero or less. So the univariate you have a strength for the strengthening of it. You can say that not just so this is the expectation of the number of zeros is at most zero or less. Now, each point, if you have the univariate case, you not only can count the number of zeros, each point you can count what's the multiplicity at which this point comes to you. Hmm? Even that, if you count, is at most b by s. Because if a point takes multiplicity 5 here, multiplicity 4 here, that's uh, that the total sum of all the multiplicity should be less than the degree. And that's exactly what we have to do. So, s times the sum of the multiplicity. Some of the average multiplicity should be at most b. So let's say the number of multiplicities across all of them should be at most b. So you can say this, we have a strengthening of it in which if we replace this, we will tell you whether a is a zero of the polynomial. Even if that zero, you replace it with a multiplicity number, it still is 
And what we'll say is the same statement is true for this one. But this one. <laughs> so it's expected value of mult p at a. Even this is less than d by modulus. That will be the Okay, it's going to be exactly the same generation. We will prove this for the end of lecture. It will be similar. We didn't do the proof of the short ripple lemma, but this will be the exact, it will be identical to the proof of the short ripple lemma, and then it will be induction over the dimension. Okay. <clears throat> but now let's return to let's return to the distance of the multivariate multiple code, given that this is the case. So what are we asking? So returning to Distance of M mult for the case M equals to S equals to. Hmm? So I'm going to write what is the probability? What do we need to find out? Probability P less than 2 at a random point A is 0. This is A, I pick it a random point from F square. This is exactly. I want to ask if I have a non-zero code word, what is the problem? What is the say I have a non-zero code word? What's its weight? What is the number of locations in which you only see all the three triples? So you give you are giving at every q element q square, you're giving me three field elements. What is the probability that what is the number of A's at that all the three field elements? This is evaluation of P, evaluation of the first derivative along the x-axis, evaluation of the second derivative. Along the all those three are three. So this is actually a vector equation. What will this be? D by two q because the point is let this be some number hmm? that so you are saying that this fraction is this fraction is this fraction is some so let's I want to say let's call this fraction mu. Hmm. Then two times mu is the sum of the multiplicity. Hmm. That should be less than d per d q square. Therefore, you should get that mu should be then mu should be less than equal to d by two. So you get the stronger this two comes from the denominator. Okay? If you want a particular distance, so in particular, if you want, if you want. Distance to be equal to uh, delta, then we can set d by 2q to be 1 minus delta, that is d to be equal to 2 1 minus delta q. This we can go all the way to 2 times 1 minus, we can go well above q. And this is what we're going to give us. Now let's plug in. So now let's plug this back in. So suppose we have distances delta. Delta that is d is equal to 2 times 1 minus delta q. Then what was rate? Rate we saw was r this 1 by 6 d square over q square. Roughly, this was this. Hmm? What is this now? This is 1 by 6, 4, 1 minus delta square. That's 2 thirds. One minus delta. So now, set delta is a moderately small constant. You can get rate close to two thirds, which is something if you could not. And just even for the distance could go larger in terms of. So you are able to get rates which are larger than two thirds. So this tells you how to get rate more than half, and this number will keep increasing. In fact, you can see in general this will be actually f by f plus one. This is f by f plus one. The FS plus one, the larger the axis, you will get rates closer and closer to this one. So let's get to the bivariate for lecture. If we have time, we'll see the parameter settings for the multivariate, but it's essentially the same idea. Okay, so what will we do in the rest of 
plan for remaining lecture. Plan for the rest. Lecture is one. This proof of the multiplicity Schwartz super lemma. A local corrector for the multivariate. And the key, this one is out here. Basically, we are getting this was the reason why. The rate is now two thirds. That was the for that just writing the special on the distance. The same thing we have the following probability. A from S per M, P to the S less than A, this is zero. This is if P is, this would be less than or equal to D by S times. S times. What we have, hence the distance of M mult or the field Q M M S D is greater than or equal to one minus D by S Q. That's the conclusion. So, so it's going to get you basically even better at this point. That's the whole point. No, and the reason is very responsible. In the case of the mother code, you could not give degrees which are larger than Q. In fact, even the individual degrees could not be larger than Q. Because you're only looking at the evaluation of a polynomial. If you give individual degrees larger than Q, there's no point in it. F power Q plus F power Q plus I will be the evaluated the same as A power Q plus I will evaluate the same as A power I. Hmm? A for I plus one. So because of the format, uh, let us get on again. But now your point is you're not just giving the evaluation, you're giving the uh, derivatives also. So X power Q, Q, my X power Q plus K, you can distinguish it because you not only have the evaluation, you also have the derivative. So you can go to degrees which are not just uh, all the way up to Q, you can go to degrees which are all the way up to S times Q. That's what happening basically here. If you're going for one to three, yes, you can let the degrees to be even larger. Okay. Now let's go into the multiplicity. What can we see? We will prove this for a general product grid, but it is true, but we will apply it only for when the product grid is the entire field. Okay. So before that, let's start off with some basic facts about, I need a couple of facts about assay derivatives. Something that we take sort of granted for regular derivatives, and the proofs will be very similar over here. The 
first part of first part of the movie. So let P be some polynomial in x1 to xm, A some point in f to the m. And let's look at and suppose the multiplicity at the point A was m. Hmm? Now I want to ask, suppose if you P, I look at the derivative of P. Some derivative, some mixed derivative. It's a, uh, this one. What is the, what will its multiplicity? What will its multiplicity at the point A be? Can you put a lower bound on this? Mm -hmm. So you say if, the, if it's a first derivative, it will be m minus one. If it's the i derivative, it will be m minus i. And more generally, that's that's the case for, for univariate setting. For the multivariate setting, it will be m minus weight of it. So basically, all I want to say is for all for all e e1 to em, where e is belong to this is all possible derivatives. Hmm? The multiplicity of the e th order multiplicity of p at the point a is at least the multiplicity of p at the point a minus the weight of p. So that should be weird. You want a proof of this? The proof of this cannot be. The proof is actually fairly simple. Just observing that. P E of F, the F the derivative of P of E. We recall we saw this. This is just E plus F. E, this is the binomial coefficient. That is the vector. This is a vector, this is a vector, this is a vector. So the vector binomial coefficient is the product of the This times P of E plus F. Hmm. Therefore, you do you want what is what does it mean the multiplicity is at least moment p is all the lower order derivatives, all the lower all derivatives of order less than this are all the same. So let's go and look at all the derivatives less than this. Each of the order derivatives derivatives less than this is exactly this quantity, but this you know means that e plus f is zero because of this. Therefore, what I'm claiming is for all hence for all. F such that weight of F is less than mult P A minus weight E. Hmm? P of E of F is this is always true, is zero since P of E plus F and this is at A is zero. This is since weight of E plus F, which is exactly weight of E plus weight of F is less than M. And you know the one. Hence, this order derivative at A is zero. It's just, there's nothing going on over here. Yeah, the only the reason I did this proof is here the e plus f over f does not cause you issue. Now, in other cases, if you want to define the e plus f in terms of this, that cannot happen. So there you have to divide. It. Here I want to ask if this zero if this is zero. That is true. It's not true that this is zero if this is zero, because this could be zero and yet this need not be zero. Because this could this quantity could have been zero. In the case of general derivatives, we didn't have this quantity. E the f derivative of the e derivative was just the e plus f derivative. You didn't have the binomial coefficient, but here it goes in the right direction, so we are fine. So that's this is part one. Part two. And part two is more about what happens when you compose functions. That is, you had let's look at the univariate case. You have p in some function, and uh, p is a function p. If you have uh, let me write it down and then give you once I write it. So I have P, which is a function of, so I write the multivariate version itself directly of f of x1 to xm. Q is 
also a function of x1 to xm, but it's not one function, it's actually m functions. The m polynomial, p one single polynomial, q is m single polynomials, and you're looking and you're going to look at mult of p composed with q at the point a. And a is a point in empty. Okay. This should be clear what I now do. This is a single univariate polynomial, multivariate polynomial, because I'm going to compose it. I want to. I want to claim this. I want to compare this to mult of p at the point q a. Hmm? This is the polynomial p at the point q a. It will actually show something stronger. But what I want to say is this guy is actually, we will prove this. Okay, we will actually prove a stronger statement. This is larger than this time, not just this, mult of q minus q of a. At the point A. By the way, this is something which we haven't defined. We haven't defined the multiplicity of, we define the multiplicity of just one polynomial. We define, we define multiplicity of, if there, there are n polynomials something, it will be the minimum of all of them. Multiplicity of, in general, where mult of R1, R2, Rk. At the point A is min over J in K mult or J, which is the natural definition. The in particular, in particular, I want to say. Notice Q minus Q of A, in which here this is always a multiplicity at least one at the point A, because I have set this polynomial to be vanished at A. Therefore, this quantity is always at least one. It could be larger than one. Therefore, in particular, we always have multiplicity of, of the composed polynomial at the point A is always greater than multiplicity of P at Q. Okay. Well, in the once again in the standard derivative world, this should be obvious. The usual derivative, we we'll just click. Hmm? This is just in root. Let me let me skip the proof of this. Is just writing out the Taylor series and seeing that basically what write out the Taylor series for P not Q at the point A. Huh? So the proof of this is basically going. I'm going to go along the following line. You want to write. P of Q at the point A plus C. Hmm? You will write this as P of Q of A plus C. Expand that out. First, use the expansion for Q to write this. Then, then once you have that, you will use. Then, you will, once you expand it out, you will write this as some Q of A plus some polynomial H of Z. Hmm? And this will be true. And notice that when you expand this out this way, you will surely get the fact that H of Z will have where the degree of H is at least the multiplicity of Q minus Q of A at the point A. Because you don't have any lower order terms. All the, all the terms will be higher than this. That's what you will get this, but now you further expand this about A, you will get P O Q A plus a whole bunch of terms. Each of these terms will be of order at least the multiplicity of P O Q, which are themselves, each of them raised to this power, therefore, they be the product of the two terms. Let me just check this out. Every term. Will have degree. At least multiplicity of P at Q of A times multiplicity of Q minus Q of A. That's what we have. So that's basically the proof of this. So now let's get into the proof of the multivariate 
what's in the mind. What do we want to bring to energy is stating the following expected value when I pick a random E1 to AM from S to the M probability that multiplicity at P at the point A this is less than B over this one this is if P is not identity zero. Okay. And the proof will be by induction on dimension M. Now, the M equals one case should be easy. This is just A going for S. Multiple at A. This is certainly at most D over size of this. That's just even because if you, some of the multiple things across the different points, they have to all, with some can be at most. That's what the average one is B like this. M equals one to K is done. So let's assume, assume it's true. So m equals one all the way up to m minus one, and let's prove it up to. Okay. So if we going to write p of x, the polynomial we will write this polynomial. Let's write it as a polynomial in the last way. So I'm going to write it as. The last variable could have degree at most t, some t, t which is smaller than the degree d. So it, it looks like some pj x1 to x m minus 1 x1 x m to the power j for some 0 less than or equal to j less than or equal to d and degree of Pj is less than or equal to how much? D minus Dj. So, so that the total degree is still less than. Thus, we have this at the form of it. So, we do the following thing. So, for each a1, a2, a m minus 1 in SM minus 1, hmm. we look at the multiplicity of P at the point A1 to AM, where the only randomness is now over the final point. Hmm. What we will show is, this is at most hmm, the multiplicity of, and let's further assume and pt is not zero. So if it goes up to, I've chosen a t to ensure that the largest pt is not zero. And multiplicity of pt at the point a1 to a n minus 1 plus t by Because I prove this thing. Again, let's get what this name is getting. What is T? T is the degree in the nth variable. So you write T in the nth variable, it's the maximum degree in the nth variable, which is some number between 0 and T. And because that is the degree, you know, T is not zero. You choose T to be that that's the largest term that appears, and PT is that way. Therefore, this is a non zero or non here. You're putting a non zero polynomial here and you're looking at the multiplicity of that polynomial at the point A1 to A. So the claim is the multiplicity at this point A1 to A. It could be because 
a1 to an minus 1 was a high order multiplicity at this point. If you get it from that, or if that was not the case, the reps come from the multiplicity expectation over t. Expectation over? Oh, no, this is the for every e, a1 to a n minus 1 and fixing that point. So I'm asking the multiplicity of this at this point for a fixed choice of the many x of the last coordinate. Asking what the multiplicity is, we get the other multiplicity already. It happens to be a large order multiplicity of this and an additional thing because it will have t for normal. I want to think first, let's see what is the energy lemma two from this part. So let's before doing this thing. Let's given claim, given claim expected value over A in S to the power M of multiple of P at A is now just expected value of A minus M S to the power M minus one. That's just everything but the last word at multiplicity p t at a minus m plus t by s. There's an expectation over t by s, but that's a constant in putting it out. What is this? d minus t by s. So the exactly d minus t by s. So it works for perfectly. The first thing is this thing is less than equal to this is less than equal to. Yeah. So given the claim we have this, given the claim we have. So now what I want to prove is the claim. So how am I going to prove it? So let's so now we will see the proof of the proof of the claim. So let let's draw out of M be the multiplicity of P T. M is a bad choice. So it's all most of the thing is most open is R free. R is multiplicity of P T at A1 to A M minus one. Hmm? So the multiplicity that means there is what does that mean? There is a vector, there is a corresponding derivative e. As that if p t is that is all the lower order derivatives are non zero or all zero, there is anything less than r of p t is zero, and there is a particular uh, 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 derivative which whose weight is r for which it is non zero. Hmm? That is. For all E, that's that weight of E, and let's call that F actually. For all F, that's that weight of F is less than R. The F the derivative at the point A1 to AM minus 1 is 0. And there exists a E such that weight of E equals R such that Pt at E at A1 to AM minus 1. Is not equal to zero. This is what we have. Notice I want to understand the multiplicity. I want to understand the multiplicity of T of x1 to xm at the point a1 to am. Hmm? Here I have something with the multiplicity of T T of. Hmm? So what's the thing to do? Let's uh, let's if you want to re relate the multiplicity of t to the multiplicity of t differentiated e time. We don't try to match because this is a variable thing on one lower order variable. It has one lesser variable. So let's actually. So I want to now actually define what is. I want to differentiate with respect to e, but the last variable I take zero times. P e is zero x1 to xm, what will this be? I claim this is exactly going to be pj e times 
x1 to xm minus 1 times xm to the power j. Is that right? Because the last variable is unaffected. So the linearity of this operator will give you this. But notice that because of this, this quantity, hmm. this quantity, we know hmm. well, what do I want to say? I don't want, if you look at it, you substitute x1 to x1 minus 1 as a1 to a m minus 1. This guy becomes a non-zero problem because we know Eje e to the x1 to the x1 minus uh, one is a non-zero problem. Okay. Because that's a non-zero problem. Okay. So in particular, so note, so this, this, let's keep this in hand. Note P E zero at the point A1 to A M minus one X M. This is a univariate polynomial in XM of exact degree. Because that doesn't vanish. The degree is fair enough. So once again, now I want to wanted to relate multiplicity multiplicity of p of x one to x n. I want to understand this at the point a one to a m. Hmm? I want to say this is at most weight of e comma zero plus multiplicity of p e zero this is just the the multiplicity of a derivative that means the multiplicity at that point minus the weight of the derivative this is just the first observation that we have done so we now reduce it to the derivative. Now over here, I know. So, so is this point over, over here? This point. Now I, I have. Now let's look at this. This one. Sorry. So what I do now is, if I had plugged it into this a one to a m minus one, then I have a BBT polynomial in XM, and then I would know that this is. The, so in, instead of this, if we had the if we had the following quantity, so if we had this, I want to say what we know. is multiplicity of p e zero, I'll plug in a n minus one all the way up xm at the point a n. This is a univariate polynomial. We are occurring at AM. This one, what is it? Multiplicity, you know, this is at most, at most T. Yeah, I'll sum over this. But the point is, what I want to know of this, I don't want. So if, if this if the quantity had been this, we are done. The proof is that's exactly what we wanted to do. We'll just sum over, we'll take the average over AM and you get this one. But this is not this. But what is that this is exactly the composition that is you have if the composition you just we had done P composed with Q. This is just Q in which several things are being set to constants. So but we know, but what you have, but multiplicity of P E zero at X one to X M, rather this, this related this way, this at A one to A M minus one X M at the point A M. This is like, this again is the composition, the composition of P e zero and the function which takes and the Q1, Q2, Q2, which are going to constants and the large one to the extent. Therefore, this is at least the multiplicity of P e zero of X1 to XM at A1 to AM times something, times some 
some point, some um, some uh, m prime where m prime is a number larger than or equal to one. We saw this last time, and that's all that we care for. So hence. Hence, multiplicity of p of x1 to xm at the point a1 to am is less than or equal to weight of e0. That's exactly multiplicity of e0 was chosen to be what? It's the multiplicity of pt at the point a1 to am minus 1 plus p. And this is again what we wanted to pull it. The plane will go apart by taking an average over it. Okay, let us see. So, for this, let's. So, so, where are we? So, all that we need to do is the local decoding step. So, we do have the uh, so local decoder. Next thing which we need to do is local decoder for multivariate multiplicity. So what's the natural thing? So once again, well, let's 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 work with a simplest uh, uh, simple case in which, as before, we work with m equals to the bivariate setting and s equals to that is evaluation and first order derivatives. Okay. In other words, what are we going to give at each, at each point? At each point, k, which is of the form a one comma a two in f square. What do we have? We we are given firstly p of a, the evaluation of the point. We are given the first derivative along the x-axis, that is p of one comma zero at the point a, and then we are given the first derivative along the y-axis. Hmm. So this is what the received word has. A received word at least part has this, and all that we know. So we are given another word. We are given. So we are given the, the received word. Looks like R from x square to f q on q square. So the word is going to have. And further, let's assume that delta of R with the encoding of P is really, really small. It is some delta by 1000, where delta is the distance of the code. So I want to be able to recover from this. I give a received word, which for most, which for a large fraction of values is quite agrees. The entire triple agrees with it. But you want, but it, but now you want to evaluate it in a random way. What this idea is, the idea is going to be exactly the same thing as before. That's my F square. Okay, that's the point A. And I want to, I give the received word. The received word is given as a function F square to F cube. 
Sorry, received word is just issued. So here also, I mean, this is just it's given. Hmm? That's the received word. And I want to find out which is the closest polynomial. What did we do last time? We shot off a line through this and decode it. So let's try to do the same thing. So let's pick the line LAB. What is LAB? LAB is set upon A plus B times T, where T is in F, where B is another point of the form. B is a direction, B1, comma B2. It's a point in F. I'm shooting off a line through this. And let's look at QAB at the point T, which is just P. So then let's look at the univariate polynomial QAB T, which is just a multivariate polynomial evaluated restricted to the line. <coughs> now, what do you have over here? So, what? So, let's question is. What do you get over here? That is when I, you can read off, you can read like in the like in the read mother case, when you read off this line, you get at every point on the line, you get a triple of values. Hmm? The question is, does this in the read mother case, what did you want? You wanted the restriction to be the sort of what you see on a deep solemn unfold. Here is it, what is it? The univariate setting of this? Is it univariate what you for how many? Points should you see at every point at every location? Two. You should just see the evaluation and the order one derivative. So you will use the direction. So let's see what so let's see. So QAB at the point QAB at any point T is exactly P, P A plus B T. Now if you want the first derivative of QAB at the so this one, notice this will exactly be B1 times. P10 at A plus B T plus B2 times P01 times at A plus B. This is just the huh? so even though you don't have it written there from that, you can actually infer it. You can take those two and so in particular, you shoot off this. So how is the decoding for before? You shoot off this line. Once you shoot off this line, you can so hopefully this line. The total number of errors is delta over 1000. So, with high probability, this line doesn't see more than delta over uh, 500 errors on it. Therefore, what you see is an evaluation of univariate multiple three code. You can infer it this way. This is correct. This univariate multiple three code is correct over for delta by 500. So, in fact, it's wrong at most delta by 500. So, if you do the univariate decoding, it will recover it. You will univariate, in fact, any decoding itself will recover it. Right. You run the univariate decoding, you will get you will get these two correct. You will get the polynomial you, you will be able to recover, and in particular, then you apply the so apply univariate univariate multiplicity decoder on the line L A B. Hmm? But it's not on it's not on the triple of points, but from the triple, you will infer the tuple of points and run the univariate multiplicity code on the tuple. You follow what I mean. You will be able to get it, and then you want to evaluate at the point A. So at the point A, what you get? You get that you get Q of A B at zero. This will exactly be equal to P of A. So you would have inferred the evaluation P of A exactly at that point. Hmm? You will also, because of the multivariate multiple support, you will also input the derivative correctly. So you also have this. You only have B1, P10 at A plus B2, P01 at A. This is what you have. So you haven't, what I want is I need to input this triple of value. What I have got is I have got P of A correctly. And I've got this particular linear combination of these guys. How do you get from the now? Take another line and do the same thing, and hopefully that line is also correct, and then you'll be able to do it. So, hmm? so at this point, 
this point we have decoded P A and B one P one zero at E plus B two P zero one at E. Hmm? Use another line. to extract P10A and P01. So that's actually the entire local decoding process for this one. So let's see the parameters of this. So we already saw the distance of the code in some delta, which is we'll have to set D to be then two into one minus delta by Q. And let me parallelly write this. So the more general setting will be D will be equal to yes times one minus delta Q. You want distance? No, you handle it. Now rate. Rate, what was it? Rate, if you recall, it was D plus M choose M. Hmm? Let's write it a little bit more slowly. It was log sigma size of C by Q by Q power M. This for the our setting of parameters, this turned out to be sigma was there was a one-third coming out here, and C will be that was a D plus two choose two, and this was Q squared. And this turned out to be roughly 1 over 6 d square q square. And we saw that if you now substitute, this will turn out to be 2 by 3, 1 minus delta square. More generally, what will it be? D will be, let's get this thing to m equals 2. So let's just stick to. M equals two, but yes, greater than equal. What will this be? Deliverance. Huh? Deliverance. So this will be D plus two choose two. That will be the same. But sigma will change. Sigma will not be not Q cube over here. It will be Q over S plus two. So S plus one choose yes, no. What will it be? So no number of derivatives. So what was yes, the number of derivatives? What's the number of derivatives? M plus x minus one choose m. Yeah, m plus x minus one choose m. M is two. Therefore, that is so what is this? It is s plus one choose s, s plus one. S plus one. S plus one. S plus one choose two. Huh? S plus one choose two. So that will come down. This one, so you will you will have a you have a two by s plus s plus one. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And there will be a q square. And that is the way to this will be the this will be it. Which is roughly how much? The two and two will cancel out, and you will have an s by s plus one times roughly d square by q square. How does it come? Huh? Sorry, sorry. The s hasn't gone out of the picture, so this will be so. There was the two and two will cancel out. This will be roughly d square over q square. But D itself will be equal to S into 1 minus delta. That S will take care of it. That S square will take three less. You get this. This is the reason why now the rate can go 
arbitrary close to mark. You can choose larger and larger multiples and get paid close to mark. So that's the other one. What about the local decoding? Local the query complexity rather. In this case, it was two Q. You had to choose two lines, which is roughly order. Uh, this is order square root n. That's the block. Okay, that much. So that's how much you want to do. More and more generally, it would be what would be the query complexity? Query will be. You can check that it will actually be S times Q. You'll have to shoot off not one, just uh, two lines. You have to shoot S lines to be able to do this. So we can order to if you send this log Q factor because we need the metrics to be not huh? You need the, so you will actually use the fact, so you can do it cleverly that it, even this, if there are errors in it, you will be able to recover from. You will show that this itself is a code. You are having some linear combination of them. If you have most of them correct, you can actually recover. You don't need it to be fully, you can. I can do it in a system of linear equations depending on the lines we use, right? Yes, yes. You want that corresponding matrix to be invertible, otherwise, you won't be able to recover. I won't be able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need the two lines to be this one, but you choose, but yes. So Q is a large, so I think of Q as a large number. Yes is a constant, therefore it's going to be fine. I choose even yes lines in a way in which the underlying field is very large. They are going to be linearly independent with very high probability. So I'm going to assume without with high probability that the S lines that I choose are happen to be linearly independent direction. Basically, this is not well, what do I mean by that? It's not true in the bivariate bivariate case. It's, so you have to write there's a corresponding matrix for which I need that matrix to be invertible, and it will be true. S log Q sample Why do I need S log? By being in the network. Huh? If you take S log Q in then you will get invertible. Yes, then you get some. Uh, uh, after no, no, you can, you can do it either that way. I want to one percent. You're saying that no, no, suppose I, I want to pick S lines. The question is, what do I want of the S lines? What do, do you need the system of the linear equations in which the derivatives in which direction? Derivative in each direction to be yeah. that so yeah. you, from that must be able to recover the recover the matrix has to be invertible. And I think for this, you can show that the question is, are you asking, is there a queue that comes in there? Is there a queue? A log queue. Log queue. The way it's stated, it seems log queue, but the way they stated is there's no log queue. So they possibly just, so I don't know how they do it. You know, off the top of my head, I don't see how they do it, but this is what they claim. They say that this is just S and Q, and you will get the same product of this one. So they say this is going to go to order S times n to the power of 1 over m and you think of n right now here it is square root n and yeah this is how the entire code is but this is also I have to check this and check the id right on the equation but all of this is yeah so that's the end of the story so you get you and then the, the conclusion is we get codes with the rate greater than half, in fact, rate tending to one, which are needed decodable, as you see, with sublinear number of codes. That's the some portion of 
Mm -hmm. There are several open questions about Matrix being code, which are still open. For instance, one is in the description. So, the short simple lemma we have it in its all and story detail for Arbit PQ. Right now, this proof still was not for Arbit. You can ask what the corresponding one could write. I don't think it's a hard answer. Nobody will think now. But you know what happens. The typical when multiple people are studying, they look at large pieces, they don't look at few equals two. Principal one to study that all of that. And you could uh, uh, write down what's the corresponding what's the lemma over there. <clears throat> yeah, and there are a bunch of other questions. The best reference for this is there is a survey article, survey by I'll post this in the one by Vastik. called Remarks on Multiplicity Codes. So to my knowledge, it covers most or almost all the, it's already eight years old, I think eight years old, five years old this survey. It covers most of the recent work on multiplicity codes. And at the end of it, it has a bunch of open questions. Most of which are open. There are a couple of them which are plastic as involved. One was actually Ashdoj, myself, and Ranam called it earlier last year. So there are a couple of questions open, but there are several very interesting questions out here. You can still widely open. And I think this is a very good playground to understand to get better code. Okay. Conclude this lecture and the course. Thanks.